In the last tutorials, we talked about color, the RGB color space, color interpolation, effects, blending modes, convolution, and transformation matrix. In my opinion, we covered the subject in detail. Now it's time to move on to the next topic of 2D and 3D coding and transformation. Before that, though, we need a refresher of the math subjects that we're going to use in the following tutorials. I must say that we're just going to review these topics slightly. If you need more information, I suggest you to take a look at the following courses. Linear Algebra from Khan Academy, taking this course is mandatory. Essence of Linear Algebra from 3 Blue 1 Brown, this course is just amazing. Math for Game Dames from Priya Holmer, she's a great instructor and she's smart. At the moment she's studying and working on the topic of quaternions applied to splines. Mathematics for Computer Games Development using Unity. The instructor is an expert in the field of math applied to video games. Few people have such a mastery on the subject and such an ability to teach. Highly recommended. We're going to use functions in all the exercises both in 2D and 3D in order to modify the UV coordinates, make drawings, patterns, animations, besides get or modify coordinates of vertices of 3D objects. These functions are well known and you have used them in your school math courses but we need to review them again because they will get harder to understand, especially when we combine them with other functions, arithmetic of vectors and linear algebra. The functions that I am talking about are linear, quadratic, power, rational, exponential, logarithmic, and sinusoidal. By default, the motion or the interpolations are linear, not much to discuss. Just the no form mx plus b, where m handles the slope and b handles the shift of the graph. This is an important function because we're going to use it a lot. It provides us with a flexible graph that adjusts well to different scenarios. Physics formulas, easy to code, easy to compute, a controls the curve, b controls the x-axis, and c controls the y-axis. This one works very much like the quadratic, with the difference that we can use a very high slope, and if we use fractions for the exponent, we get a graph with a horizontal asymptote. In this case, since the denominator can be zero, this has an asymptote. This one is like the power function, but with the difference that the variable is the base instead of the exponent. This one has an horizontal asymptote, representing a slow motion towards a final value. Finally, we get to the most important functions which are sine and cosine. They are used extensively in shaders to describe motion, effects, pseudo-random values, noise, and so on. Parameter A, called amplitude, affects the height of the wave, B, affects the width of the wave, and C, the phase, shifts the wave to the left or to the right. There are all sorts of variations and combinations of the sine and cosine functions. For example, we can add them together and this results in a combined motion. This is used extensively in random movement. Easing functions. These are combinations of the basic ones and can be useful for describing motion in time. We will use some of them in the shaders that we will make soon. As you can see in this web page, that seems quite cool to me. The code is right in, in TypeScript, but we can easily convert it to shader code. Vector arithmetic. In the previous tutorials, we have used vector arithmetic. Operations like addition and subtraction were useful to achieve some of the color effects. Something that we have missed out is the dot product and cross product operations. Both are very important, useful, and efficient operations for using shaders. Especially the dot product, that you will know this is used widely. As you can see, the value of the dot product ranges from 1 to minus 1 
depending on the angle between the two vectors that we are comparing. The cross product that is used to get the perpendicular vector from two other vectors. Linear algebra. This is a huge subject. In fact, at the beginning I already recommended some courses. What I want to show you here is the simplification, which I think is useful to understand the transformations of linear algebra. This is essentially by modifying each of the bases of the matrix and thus obtain different transformations. I have shown this before. You have access to the transformation matrix inside the Godot interface. Then you have the basis vectors x, y, and z, as well an extra row that in this example I have used assigned the letter w for convenience, and with this you can move the whole object in its space. This is a feature of the affine transformation matrices where you can have an additional row to transform in one step the position of the object, either into the entry D. In this demonstration, I'm going to, to do a rotation in the y axis. And for this, I am going to move the basis vector independently. If you know this, this is not a rotation itself, but a controlling the formation of the space, a transformation in each one of the basis vectors, which finally results in a rotation. The beauty of linear transformation is that once you understand them, they are quite simple and really useful. Even you cannot only choose each one of them, but you can multiply them together to get a rotation, scale, share, and displacement in just one step. Here you have the transformation matrix. As you can see, this is in a different order, because in Godot I think that the transformation matrix is transposed. You have the translation, the additional vector for translation, you have the scale, you have rotation about the x, y, and z axis with sine and cosine. But what I want is that you understand that, that the rotation is in each of the bases. So we're going to see how, how you can rotate a point. And I'm talking about rotating a point because actually that's happening in the background. It's just trigonometry and algebra. It's just a rotation of each basis vector, like it's a point. We use the trigonometric identities. We consider that there is already a rotation theta and there is a rotation pi. We use the identity. We substitute the angles in the identity. Identity again. We expand the factor r. We substitute the variables x and y. And finally, we create the matrix with arbitrary positions used to match the form of the matrix multiplication by a vector.